You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the options playbook, the program where we break down cutting edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Hello, and welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of the Options Playbook. Well, we've kind of gotten away from actual strategies using what's going on with the marketplace right now. And we've been trying to learn. We've been talking about the pricing of uh, just option contracts in general and when and which option you might want to buy if you're just buying options. Last week, we looked at long spreads, a long put spread, a long call spread, and just talked about the dynamics and the delta and the time premium that was involved in that. So the next step is to talk about short spreads. And we're going to look at a short uh, call spread, which is a bearish trade in Apple, just because we used Apple last week. Uh, as always, nothing's meant to be a recommendation. We're just trying to learn here on Options Playbook Radio. But we're going to look at a short call spread in Apple in particular, and we're going to talk about the dynamics of it. And, and what do you want to think about when doesn't, no matter what underlying you're, you're trading in, what you want to think about when you're doing short spread trading? All right. Now, everything that we talk about today, we're going to look at it on the call side, but everything applies on the put side also. I just decided to go on in and the market's open right now. We're, we're taping uh, on September 26th uh, and and the market has a few few a uh, few minutes left so these prices are real prices not meant to be a recommendation and we're looking at apple apple right now is trading at 15364 that's where it's at and we're going to look at two different spreads and i want to ask you this so before i get too far along we, i'm sure we have some short spread traders out there um if you are trading a short spread, in other words, you want, you're selling it, bringing in a net credit to the account, you're usually dealing with out of the money option contracts, that's the more popular short spreads to sell. Would you rather be, uh, well, I just, I'll use my example, would you rather be 10 days out to expiration or would you rather be uh, 55 days out to expiration? Which one would you choose if you're looking to do a short spread and say make a 55 cent credit? That's what your goal is. You're trying to make that amount. What route would you rather go? And I'll let you think about that for a second because that's the question that we're going to try to address today is what dynamics do you have to think about when you're looking at doing a short spread. And one of the things that we've always done, uh, especially when we're talking about earnings and expected moves is if I'm doing a short spread, I think it's fairly important to use the expiration that you're looking at and look at what the price of the most at the money long straddle would be where you buy the call and you buy the put. That's the first step in the process. Think about what the market is expecting that underlying to do 
over the life of these option contracts and realize that that type of move is a very possible move over the life of those contracts. And let's set up one. We're going to go out to the our first example, the November 17th expiration. It's 52 days away. I'm on the Ally Invest option chains. It tells me it's 52 days away. And we're looking at uh, the... The underlying stock is at 153.77. So the 155 we're talking about, a 10-point move is the expected move. I'm going to round off here a little bit based off of the market right now. So knowing that that could happen, we're going to go on out and set up our, our short call spread. And we're going to, first of all, make sure that we can be more than 10 points away. Okay, so that's our first uh, thing that we're going to look at here is to make sure that, well, if the market's saying that a 10-point move is, is feasible, we want to be farther than a 10-point move away. And when we did this, what I looked at is I want to get a, a decent premium that I can bring in. So we, I looked at the 165 call. We're going to sell that call and buy the 170 call. Now, that's a five-point wide spread, and we can bring in an 80-cent credit in order to do – if we did that trade. So we're bringing in an 80-cent credit on a five-point wide spread. That means our maximum risk is $4.20, and always in options, you got to remember to put in the commissions that are involved. So if you did a one-by-one -one contract, you're talking about bringing in $80 and risking $420 plus commission. All right. So we're more than 10 points away. Uh, on this underlying, the underlying right now is 153.59, so we're more than 10 points away. So we're, we're feeling a little bit comfortable. As a matter of fact, you can get a feel for the probability of success by looking at the delta of the option contract that you sold. And that delta right now is a 24 delta. And that says to me that there's a 24% chance that this will finish one cent in the money at expiration, at least one cent. That doesn't mean that it's going to finish 80 cents and you're going to be a complete loser. It's just saying the chances of, of it finishing one cent in the money based on the volatility right now in Apple is about 24%. So a high probability trade, and that's the way most people set up uh, short spreads in general. Okay, so 52 days, that's a long time. Now, if I'm looking at doing short spreads, I don't want to be in Apple for 52 days. Um, most of the time, if I was going out on a longer spread, I want to stay somewhere between the 40 to 50 day period. Now, obviously, I, I'm taping on this specific day. I can't get an exactly 45 day period out, which I think is a real good spot to be anywhere from 40 to 50 days. Uh, I like to look at those type of spreads with the plan that I'm going to buy them back in 10, 15, 20 days. I'm not planning on riding this all the way to expiration if I'm looking out further in time. So keep that in mind, because now I want to look at a shorter term spread. And that spread, we're going to bring in a little bit less credit, and we're going to be a little bit closer with our short option to where the current stock price is at, but we're going to be in a much shorter time frame. So if I look at Apple right now, I see it once again, it's at 153.59. We're going to look to sell the October 6th expiration, which is 10 days away. And we got to go a little bit closer to the money. So right now we're going to sell the 157.50 call and buy the 162.50 call. So we did a five-point wide spread just like we did in our other example, and we're able to bring in a net credit of 55 cents to the account. Now, if we look at that expiration uh, the, and look at the, the, long, uh, the long straddle for that, keeping in mind that the stock right now is at 153.59, the long straddle on the 155 is, uh, I'm looking at it right now, it's about $4.00. So the long straddle is trading for about four dollars. That's one fifty-nine. So that's very possible for it to get to to this uh, 
this expiration. So 153 plus four is 157. Uh, we're just out of it. We're just out of it. So 153 plus four is 157. We're selling the 157.50, which it still here says it's a 20, well, it's 24 Delta exactly. So I, we're looking as far as probability at the same trade for that time period. All right, so we're looking at the same probability. We've got the same delta on the 150, 157.50 strike call as we do on the 165 strike call. So we've got basically the same probability. And I didn't necessarily plan that, but it's kind of weird how I, if you're using the same format to try to set up different spreads and different expiration, how often you, you come up with, with that <laughs> same type of scenario. So we're we're really kind of comparing same probability trades. One is done for a little less, a little bit shorter period of time, and one is doing for a little bit more with a much longer period of time. Okay, so this to total trade, we sell the 157.50 by the 162.50 is five points wide. Uh, the midpoint on it right now with the market open is at 55 cents. So we got a five point wide trade. That's our max risk. We're, we're getting it done for a 55 cent net credit credit. That means that the total risk is $4 and 45 cents. So we can make $55 and we could lose $445 and don't forget to put in commissions when you're all said and done. So we have two scenarios. We have a 10 day spread and we have a 52 day spread. Which one would you like to do? Um, with the advent of weeklies, there's gives you a lot more options and the ability to do a much shorter uh, expiration, a much shorter spread. And a lot of people like to go that route. So I would not be surprised at all if you went the route of selling the 55 cent shorter term credit spread. And what I want to say to that is, you know, think about this for a little bit. If we're going to pre in in this pretend world, we're going to say we're really trying to make a 55 cent credit. And that's our whole goal. Now, in order to do that, if we're going to try to make that whole 55 cent credit, what we need to happen is that underlying stock has to move less than the expected move, which is, is good. It gives us a little bit uh, higher probability. We said the probability was 24 percent that it would finish one cent in the money or not. Um, so if we want to get that, though, that option contract, that stock can't has to stay below 157.50 for the next 10 days, and these options have to expire worthless to receive that entire credit. Now, trying to buy that back and trying to close out that trade, which is kind of amazing, and it's just you know an, an anomaly of option pricing, but getting that last dime or 15 cents is really hard in the options pricing world. They just don't want to give it to you. That premium just won't dry up. You got a fairly expensive underlying in this situation in Apple, $150. It's not a cheap stock and it's hard to just close it out. So you really need to ride it all the way to expiration and hope that it is below 157.50 to make this 55 cent credit. Now, a lot of people are, are, attracted to that trade mainly because it's just a very quick reward you put it on either you make it or you don't and then you manage your risk if it goes against you when are you going to get out are you going to get out when you're down 55 cents because you're trying to make 55 cents or are you going to get out when you're down a buck on the trade you got five points you got four dollars and 45 cents of risk total here uh you don't really want to take that hit if you take that whole hit that's really hard to earn back, especially if you're selling 55 cent credit spreads over and over again. It's hard to get that $4.45 back. So you got to decide and manage that risk where you're at. A lot of people will say they'll try to do double. If you're bringing in a 55 cent credit on a 10 point or on a 10 day spread, and that's their, their strategy, then if they're down $1.10 on it, which is double it, then they're going to get out because you got a high probability of success doing that trade. So my, your thinking is, well, I can afford a hit. I can take a double loss, but then I'm getting out no matter what I can afford to get the maximum loss. And that, and there's some good logic in that. And I don't, I don't mind that at all. Or if you just say it's a 55 cent credit, I, if I got, if I'm going to lose 55 cents on it, I'm going to get out, but that just doesn't give you a lot of leeway. If it goes against you right away, you could be down 55 cents in a hurry in, in that underlying.
So I prefer to go out longer term in my spreads and I can still try to get that 55 cent credit. You know, we sold the long term spread, the November 17th expiration for 80 cents. We are able to go up and strike a little bit in order to get that, you know, at the same probability. So we're now selling the 165 call as opposed to the 162.50 call. And I don't mind doing it and buying it back 10 days later. In other words, if I'm correct on my forecast and the market starts to go down or I get some time decay, that range of time decay is, is a nice linear rate of decay. And I might be able to just buy it back for 25 cents and get my 55 cents that way. And here's the reason why I would rather do it on the long-term time frame, especially, you know, we're ignoring earnings. We're just talking about things in general. You got to, obviously, when you're doing spreads, you got to be aware of uh, short spreads in, in particular. You got to be aware of when earnings are at. But it's so hard to get that last 25 cents out of any spread or any call option or anything unless they get way out of the money. It's just so hard to get that, that, uh, I would rather put something on for a little bit more, go a little bit farther away from the stock prices at with the intention of trying to get the same type of profit. And you can decide where that was. My example was 55 cents in the near term, but that's not a golden book of answers. Uh, you know, that's not the golden rule as far as selling short spreads. But I would rather go out farther in time and maybe even keep the same time frame. I'd be willing to go on a 52-day trade. I'm willing to be in that for another 20 days, 25 days. Is that That's when I really want to try to buy this back. And here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. First thing, it's hard to get that, that last little bit of premium out of your spread. Second thing is that if this goes against you, you can do something with it. If you are dead wrong, you put it on on day 52 and the market shoots up to your short strike, 165, you can close it out. Why? Because there's something left there to close out. That time premium is going to protect you. Not to mention, you could roll the spread. You could do something with it. You could turn it into a butterfly if you wanted to. Um, the potential on that spread to adjust it, with that much time premium, you can adjust now, let's talk about the shorter spread, uh, the shorter expiration spread. If you do that trade and you are dead wrong, it's going to hurt you much more because of the way that the time premium works on the in-the-money option contracts uh, as expiration approaches. So if it goes against you and it starts getting in the money, it's going to go against you much faster and quicker and hurt you more than that longer-term spread. So... I would rather go out longer in time, bring in more of a credit with the intention of maybe buying back, like in our example, it would be 25 cents. So we'd get that same 55 cent credit. I have the ability to adjust the trade. If it goes against me right away, I can, I can do something with that trade. And I don't want to be in a short spread that last week or two to expiration. That 10 days to expiration is just a very scary uh, uh, time period if your short option gets in the money. And there's still a very good possibility that it can. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't think about, they look at the probability of the option finishing one cent in the money uh, at expiration. Now, there's a quick and dirty way to look at what's the probability of it touching uh, that short strike over the life of the option contract. And the quick and dirty way is it's usually double the probability of it finishing because the market, as it's finishing, it can go up, it can come back down, it can it could get to that price, but they're just saying at that expiration date, there's a 24% chance that it'll be one cent in the money or more. On uh, if that is the case, that means that there's a 50% chance over the life of the option contract that it will actually touch that price. And that's another reason why if I look at this, this spread and I go further out in time, realize that there's a, a good chance that it's going to get close to my short strike. So I want to be able to work with it. I want to be able to adjust with it. And the way time premium works overall as expiration approaches, if you can go out 
40, 50, 55 days approximately in that range, you get a nice rate of decay over the next 20 days. You don't get the huge rate. You don't get that reward right away, but you you have this ability to close the trade and adjust the trade. All right. Well, that's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have a topic you'd like to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer on the program, send them directly to me at theoptionsguy at invest.ally.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com.